Learn how to place content with grid area names using CSS Grid. Here is the pirate design that we will be building today. As you can see, the yo ho ho heading runs vertically along the message and the paragraph. Now in this demo, the bootstrap framework has been selected, uh, though uh, the steps that you'll see today will work with all of the apps frameworks. Bootstrap itself is a mobile first workflow. So I will disable the breakpoints. This way I can work with the canvas extended um, while all the default uh, styles that I choose will apply to all the breakpoints. The content in this example is all organized into a container element. Nested within the container allows you to position them within the container without affecting the placement of the other content on the page. So you will drag and drop a container element from the content pane onto the canvas, or you can simply click to add. I'm going to apply some basic layout settings to the container so that um, I can manage its size. Uh, start by applying a class name. I'm going to call it Pirate Section. Under the Styles pane, Layout, Dimensions section, I set the max width to 800 and then center that container by choosing the Auto metric for both the right and left margin. Next, from the content pane, add a heading one element to the canvas. Upon hover, you can select that little A um, and that will launch the text edit mode. I will then change the placeholder for my special yo ho ho text. Now on hover, um, by clicking that little duplicate icon, it will automatically add a second heading uh, element to the canvas. Uh, so then you can quickly add it in there and then change the text. My subheading message is going to say, a pirate's life for me. Now, if I want to keep these elements, um, if I want them to share the same exact style configurations, I would go to the style pane apply styles, and change that control to type. This would keep their style, um, the style selections in sync. These styles are indicated by a little pink line. Now scrolling down the design section, the font type Garmin is chosen, and I will make the font um, bold. For style variations, I will apply a class name and, a chain and change that apply style control to um, class. I will give this heading the class name Vertical Hero. Then under the design section, the font will be changed to Alpha Slab 1 with a fallback font of Arial Black for unsupported browsers. I'm also gonna kick up that font size to 80 pixels and choose a cool color. Now in picking your color, you can spin the wheel to discover new colors, um, or you can type in the RGBA or hex code directly. For the second heading, I will select it and also give it its own class name, subheading. Yes, I know these class names aren't very semantic. In your own projects, you'll want to use class names with more descriptive language that pertains to your content. Under the design section, I will change the color to a soft orange hue. Lastly, on the content pane, add a paragraph element to the canvas. Don't worry if you drop it into the wrong spot or outside the container like I just did here. Um, you can simply drag and drop to reposition. As a good habit, be sure to give that element a class name. 
Here I named it Pirate Paragraph. Then double click on the canvas to launch that text edit mode where you can swap out the placeholder text. I already have my text saved to my clipboard, so I'm just going to paste it right in. Boom, looks good. Now what has been created so far is in um, what is called fallback first mode. This means that older browsers that don't support CS grid, CSS grid positioning will uh, see the design just how it is now with the content stacked. This is good because um, the content is still readable and looks good for those viewers. But it is now time to tweak that layout for grid positioning. So from the design for toolbar icon, um, we're going to add a support rule for display grid and then hit done. Now on that styles pane, the design for control will allow you to select um, the option display grid. Now any styles that we apply will appear for modern browsers that support CSS grid. To change the layout for CSS Grid, select the container that's holding our elements and go to the Styles pane, Layout, Display, and choose Grid. Then click on the blue button to launch the Grid Editor. The Grid controls will appear along the right side of the canvas. Any configurations you make will appear instantly. But don't fear if things don't look perfect, as we'll always tweak them where needed. So at the top of the panel is where you'll create the actual grid itself. What you're doing is you're dividing that container element into a grid of rows and columns. Clicking the plus and minus arrows um, in the corners of that grid uh, allows you to add new rows and columns now I clicked on that top plus sign to add a new column to the rows. This way they each have two cells in each row. By selecting the title of each row and column, you can control its sizing. Using the FR unit for even, even spacing, I set the top cell to 2FR and the cells in the two uh, lower rows as 1FR each. Next, we will use area names to direct the content to the spot that we want them to be located. Removing the dot in the middle of the cell, I will then enter um, the area names that I want. In this case, I'm going to name uh, Vertical Hero down the three cells vertically of my grid. In the top right cell, I'm gonna name Subheading and the two lower cells will be paragraph. Then click OK to exit that grid panel. Yes, the content is not exactly right just yet, but that's because we have not actually identified which elements match the grid area names that we just entered. So to name the elements, select the first heading and go to the Styles pane, Layout, and open the grid and flexbox layout controls. Change the grid to grid area based placement. In the name box, give it the exact same name that you entered into the grid. In this case, vertical hero. Then repeat these steps for the other elements. Now, we know that it can be tricky to remember names that you've applied, especially if um, in your project you're working with multiple elements. Um, so when you're in this area, in the name box area, um, it, you'll see an auto-populated list of names for you to pick from to make it easier for you. Okay, so the next tweak we need to make is to that vertical hero. Uh, let's go ahead and flip that, baby. So on the Styles pane, Layout, scroll down to the Direction and Writing Mode controls. Changing the Writing Mode to Vertical Right to Left will spin that heading into a cool position. 
And what do you know? It takes up the spacing of the three vertical cells that we configured in our grid. So with the items in place, there's still much to tinker with when it comes to styles and spacing. With the vertical hero um, still selected, I'm going to tweak the line height um, to a no unit one. Um, to modify the grid, hover over the canvas and click on that blue grid icon. You can also relaunch it from the Styles pane too if you like. Under the grid settings, you can manage the alignment and positioning of the content within the cells uh, along with the gap for spacing. In this demo, I'm setting 20 pixels for the rows and columns. I will justify the items to flex start so they will start at the top of the cells. Click OK to exit. Now that vertical heading would be nice if it was centered in its cell. So under the styles pane, layout, grid and flexbox layout, change the justify self to center. Now, to add spacing around the whole container, under the dimension se section, I'm going to apply 10 pixels of space to the top, bottom, as well as both sides. Testing with the slider, the design looks good for all viewports, except there is um, a lot of spacing between that vertical heading and the other content. Reviewing the um, dimensions, I see that there is a 53 left and right margin applied um, to, that, to that heading. So I'm gonna drop that down to zero to pull, the, pull in those items. Finally, it is time to responsify it. This means um, tweaking the content to look appropriate um, for each available screen size. So to do this, Turn off um, the Disable Breakpoints feature by going to, into default mode. This way we can style the content um, at each breakpoint individually. Starting at the smallest screen, the orange subheading could be resized a little smaller. We really don't need to yell at our mobile viewers. So moving the, um, moving this, the slider outwards, I can increase the size I repeat where necessary for the other breakpoints. I also do the same for that paragraph element, increasing its size for larger screens because I think it looks nicer that way with the bigger font. Move that width slider to test it out for all sizes and tweak as much as you want till you're happy with each variation. Well, you've now mastered grid area name placement within CSS grid layout controls. Now go off and make magic within your websites.